Bonjour, my name is Michelle Chow, Strategy and Public Affairs at the Canada Council for the Arts. And on behalf of Council, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our 2016 annual public meeting. I will be the MC for today's event. Je m'appelle Michelle Chala, je suis la directrice générale stratégie affaires publiques au Conseil des Arts. I am Michelle Chala. I am delighted to greet you here at our 2016 annual public meeting. I will be MC for today's event. Here in person at our offices at 150 Elgin. This meeting is being live streamed and live tweeted, so I'd like to take a moment to also welcome viewers who are joining us from elsewhere in Canada and abroad. Je salue tous ceux et celles qui se sont joints à nous. So I want to salute all those of us who are here in person and the viewers who are joining us uh, from elsewhere in Canada and abroad on Twitter or the web. The annual meeting with the usual niceties. On January 16, six Canadians were killed in a terrorist attack in Ouagadougou. Those men and women wanted to help build a better world by establishing lasting ties between societies. We want to offer our condolences to their families and friends, and we invite the vast family of the cultural community gathered here today to join us in a moment of silence, paying tribute to those men and women and their selfless humanity. Aujourd'hui, le déroulement de l'Assemblée annuelle ne peut suivre un cours. So, today we can't be as usual with our usual niceties. On January 16, six Canadians were killed in Ouagad Ouagadougou. They wanted to build a better world by establishing sustainable links between societies. I would like us to hold a moment of silence to uh, emphasize the humanism of these people and to offer our condolences to the family members. Thank you. For those of you who are here in person, we are offering simultaneous interpretations to should you need it. The remarks will be in both official languages, so if you need a headset, please see one of our staff over by the reception desk. And we'll also be posting the speeches in both official languages on our website after today's event. Les présentations se feront dans les Presentations will take place in both official languages, so we are offering simultaneous interpretation. And if you need to, please get a headset at the reception area. But the speeches will be available in both languages on our website. To acknowledge that we are on traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin peoples, and also acknowledge the contribution of Indigenous peoples to our history, unique identity, and the emergence of a common future. J'aimerais d'abord rappeler. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin peoples, and I acknowledge the contribution of Indigenous peoples to our history, unique identity, and to the emergence of a common future get started, a few housekeeping items. We ask that you turn off the sound of your mobile devices for those of you here. Donc, avant de débuter la réunion, nous vous demandons... Please uh, turn off your mobile devices for those who are present here. Mm. Have an informal reception afterwards. Remarks, a video, and a live performance will be followed by about 30 minutes um, for a question and answer period from uh, people in the room and also those who are, who are joining us online. We've already received several questions in advance and we look forward to more. So online, you can submit your questions using our hashtag Council16. L'Assemblée prendra fin vers 17 our event will run until about 5.10, and you'll, there will be an informal reception afterwards. Remarks, a video, and a live performance will be followed by about a 30-minute for a question period and answer period, both from people in a room and those joining us online. We've already received several questions in advance, and they, all your questions will be answered. 
Those online can submit their questions using the hashtag Council 2016. Your questions, but if we run out of time, we will be sure to post answers on the web in the coming days. Donc nous tenterons évidemment de répondre. We will try to get to all your questions, but if you we run out of time, be sure that uh, your answers will be posted on our site. I will alternate between French and English. Donc, si tout le monde a leurs écouteurs, je vais maintenant alterner en anglais et français. Les arts sont au... The arts at, are at the heart of the activities of our council, and we will open this assembly by presenting you a fantastic circus company. This company is based in Igloulik in Nunavut, but its noun is known internationally and nationally. They are excellent and do fantastic social work in their community. Here from Nunavut, but we're excited to show you a bit of their work in a pair of short videos. The first is an excerpt of a live performance on the closing night of Alienate Festival in the nor northern community of Iqaluit in July 2014. The second is the trailer for a documentary film called Circus Without Borders, which also features Production Calabante, a circus arts company based in Montreal. So Lots of youth under 20 years old. Suicide affects so many people. Sometimes one person dies and then it's chain reaction. And that's very scary. In Guinea, I see the potential and all the good acrobats. I need to help them too. I was thinking I have to take care of those that we love. I do circus, all the bad things go away. He started telling me he has his dream of going back to Guinea, start working with his brothers, and I was telling him, hey man, that's exactly what I'm doing in the Arctic. I said, this guy has such a beautiful quality that we should have it in the show. <laughs> stage we know each other so much that it's very comfortable it's very calm we are very close we're like a family c'est pas les gens qui viennent faire des choses et partir c'est nous qui doivent changer 
I can't save no one, only me. That's everyone's responsibility to take care of their own life. Pierre has generously provided time and finances to numerous philanthropic, philanthropic endeavors in the arts and education. We are fortunate to have such an engaged and experienced leader at the board of the council. Please join me in welcoming Pierre Lassonde. Merci, Michel. Et... Uh, thank you, Michel, and thank you, Art Cirque. To share, to, for sharing with us this video on this fascinating practice that is the circus art. The human and artistic dis dimension of this company is really inspiring. I am very happy to greet you here at the Canada Council uh, for the Arts, as Michel said, to my first uh, public uh, annual meeting as chair of the board. I want to take the opportunity to recognize the tremendous work done by my predecessor, Joseph Rotman. With his passing last January, we lost an engaged leader and committed advocate for the arts. We pay special tribute to him in our annual report, which will be published in the coming weeks, and I invite you to read it. On behalf of the Council, I want to express our deep appreciation for Mr. Rotman's legacy, a legacy that I'm honored to continue today. I would also like to recognize the outstanding work done by last year's Vice Chair, Nathalie Bondil, who took over certain duties in the interim following Mr. Rotman's passing before my arrival. So once again, thank you, Nathalie. For me to, uh, you know, come to, to be the chair of uh, the Canada uh, National Arts Funder. The council embodies so many of the values that are important to me personally. Inclusion, creativity, opportunity, engagement, just to name a few. So we are committed to opening doors of opportunity for artists and art organization to innovate and share their work at home and abroad. Opportunity for all Canadians to discover and engage with the arts. As you may know, I've made my career in the field of natural resources. But one of the things that I've always maintained is that um, Canada's most precious resource, it's not you know, our oil, it's not our gold, it's not our copper, it's not our forests, it's our people. And uh, I would go so far to say that human inspiration is the ultimate resource. In Canada, we can be proud of our rich supply of artistic talent that inspires us and feed our souls. We see it every day in communities across the country, in the works of our writers, filmmakers, musicians, visual artists, dancers, and theater artists. I'm proud that we are bringing some of that incredible talent to our meeting today. And what's so exciting to me at this point in time is that the benefits that artists bring to our lives are being recognized more and more. The new federal government has recognized the role of the arts in strengthening our economy and in shaping our identity. That's why it has made the arts a priority with a commitment to significantly increase funding to the arts. But that's just one example. There are many stories from the past years of the arts involving and educating citizens in the major issues of our time. 
Il suffit de penser au récent rapport de la Commission de vérité et réconciliation. Il en est clairement ressorti que les arts... We just have to think of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Arts and Culture, were identified as playing a key role in building identity, community and reconciliation between indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. The Council has worked with other national partners to launch an initiative that funds projects dedicated to support reconciliation. Indeed, reconciliation and self-determination will increasingly inform our support of artists from First Nation, Inuit, and Métis art community. Think also of sustainable development. It's a major topic of concern these days, and artists can be a powerful voice in conversations about what we value as a society and what we want to preserve for future generations. To demonstrate this strength, I think that our one tangible example in, is Canada's presence at the 2016 Venice Biennale for Architecture, which will bring together the works of several artists who are exploring issues around resource extraction. The Canada Council is proud uh, to partner with the Arts Gallery of Alberta. We are proud to reaffirm our engagement in this regard, but it will be done from the point of view of Canadian artists. Canada Council is proud to partner with the Art Gallery of Alberta and OPSIS to bring this timely work to the world stage. Our commitment to sustainability even extends to our office space. This beautiful building is not only a showcase for the arts, it is a gold lead certified building that is highly efficient in terms of water and energy consumption and lower carbon emissions. Work of the Canadian Commission of, for uh, UNESCO, which is also housed within the Council. The Commission is an incredible network established 60 years ago with the mandate to create a more peaceful and better world through education, science, culture, information, and communication. This mandate is as important as ever, and it supports and reinforces the Council's own work to make a difference through the arts. Equity is another priority that runs throughout the Council's work as we make concerted efforts to remove barriers to funding that culturally diverse artists have faced. Why is this important? Well, because we need all citizens to be able to see themselves in our arts. We need only to think of the Oscars so white that are currently going on, the discussion, as you all know, the controversy happening now in the U.S. Well, you know, why is it a controversy? Well, because too many people do not recognize themselves in these awards. And here, diversity is more than just an obligation. It really is part of who we are as Canadians. It's our strength. We have been shaped, if you think about it, throughout our history by succession, successive waves of immigration. And with each of these waves, newcomers bring the gifts of their culture back home. That's what builds a vibrant art scene. That's what builds understanding and empathy in citizens. And what could be more important at a time when our world seems to be tilting toward violence and intolerance? When we share our culture with newcomers, we share a bit of ourselves. We are proud that at the Council we, to have recently launched an initiative to share Canada's culture by offering Syrian refugees free admission to performance and exhibitions across the country. Thank you. On the topic of diversity, I should also mention that I'm also extremely proud that uh, for the third consecutive year, the Council's Board has been nominated for uh, Excellence in Governance Award from the Canadian Society of Corporate Secretaries. 
specifically in the category of best practices to enhance board diversity. One of the strengths of the arts in Canada, indeed um, a strength of Canada itself, is diversity. We want to ensure that this diversity is reflected and expressed at the highest levels in the Council. I could continue with many more examples of how the conversation around the arts is changing. I know you all could share stories about the difference the arts make in your lives and your communities. This shift in the way we are thinking and talking about the arts makes the transformation taking place at the Canada Council all the more relevant. It makes the opportunity that we have to make a difference all the greater. The Council's transformation allows us to breathe new life into the mandate we've had for close to 60 years, and that is to foster and promote the production and enjoyment of the arts in Canada. Most of you here in the room and joining us online know that the Council is undergoing a huge transformation to scale up its impact on the arts and on the lives of all Canadians. Of course, the main lever of change for a funding organization like the Council is its granting system, and that's where our transformation begins. When I arrive at Council in the midst of this groundbreaking work, uh, uh, this was already started, and I want to say how impressed I was by the board the management and the staff, they've done a great work, visionary work, and transforming work. In other words, Council works really hard to reflect what's best in the community, the artistic community of Canada. Over the past year, we announced a new funding model reflecting better the world of the arts and the impact of technology on the creation and consumption of arts. This new model will reduce the number of programs that we had from 147 to six national programs not focused on disciplines. These programs will be implemented, as you know, in 2017 and they aim to better support artists and organizations that want to innovate, that want their communities to be uh, places where it is a good to live, that will uh, distribute Canadian art everywhere and abroad, and that have an approach based on self-determination to create, know, and share Aboriginal uh, work. 2017 will mark the 150th anniversary of Canada and the 60th anniversary of the Canada Council. In it is important to take time to recognize these milestones and to celebrate our future together, to tell a compelling story to ourselves and to the rest of the world about who we are as Canadians now and who we want to be in the future. I can't think of a better way to tell the story of uh, the, the Canada at 150 years than through the arts. I look forward to celebrating with you and as the Chair of Canada Council all of this. Thank you again. Thank you, Pierre. And the arts addressing big issues of our time. And I think this is something our next artist can definitely relate to. Dwayne Morgan founded a company called Up From The Roots Entertainment that promotes the work of African Canadians and urban influenced artists. His own work transcends geographic and disciplinary boundaries. Notre prochain participant est un artiste de la création. Our next guest is Dwayne Morgan. And for Francophones, we uh, translated his poems so that you can read them and hear them. I know that it can't be a uh, very good, tr e excellent translation, but at least you will appreciate his performance. With studios to make a film called Three Knocks based on his poem about domestic violence. His photography has been exhibited in a show called The Sum of Her Parts, which explored female body image. 
and he's an acclaimed spoken word artist. So today, he joins us from Toronto to present his works, The Making of a Man and January 1974. Please join me in welcoming Dwayne Morgan. Thank you, good afternoon. <clears throat> we are all the manifestation of our parents' thoughts and desires. Whether we are planned or the result of a one night stand, and I've never asked the circumstance surrounding my conception, because when you ask the questions, you can't hide from the answers, so I pretend as though I don't want to know. You see, my papa was a rolling stone, and I wonder if I too will follow the same path. If my home will be wherever I lay my hat and though I try. I can't understand how I'm supposed to take it when my mom tells me that I'm exactly like my dad because he brought her love and he left her with pain. Her version of what happened always has other names to be blamed, but you can't always be the victim. And even if you are, at some point, you have to recognize the part that you have played in your own victimization because it can't always be someone else's fault and I have fought within myself trying to find the best way to help with half of me hoping that one day she'll be strong and the other half wanting to hold her and tell her to move on because life moves on whether or not we choose to and throughout my moving on I've never had the best of everything but I've made the best of everything that I had and my mom would probably kick my butt for coming to Ottawa and telling you there was a time when our dinner came from the food bank and I watch how that hurt her pride and she denied herself to for her kids. And it would be a lie if I said that I never cried because on many nights I did. But it was in those times that I offered up the most praise because rainy days don't last forever. And the sun is sure to shine so when people ask me why I write, it's because my life depends on it. And in trying to master myself, I become a slave to my pen, writing wherever and when God sends the inspiration, hoping to set my demons free, hoping to find peace but inner peace is increasingly hard to find. I just want to be loved. Not for who you think I am or who you want me to be. I want to be loved for me, a black man who is in love with his people, but not at the expense of his love for all people, because the price of hating others is that you love yourself less, yet hate runs deep in the hearts of many. I'm a black man who daily overcomes fear and shyness to speak in a world where it is far easier to remain silent. I'm a black man who is a work in progress. What you see is what you get, and by tomorrow I might have changed because I'm not too old to grow. And until God comes down and clutches me from this earth with his hands, nothing will ever stop the making of this man. Whoa. Uh, so in that poem, uh, at the very beginning, I said I did not want to know the circumstances surrounding my conception. This was a much older poem because as I got older, I realized that I did want to know the circumstances <laughs> surrounding my conception, uh, which meant that I had to consult with an expert, so I had to interview my mother. And upon that interview, this is the poem that happened. <laughs> January 1974. Two immigrants huddled, shielding themselves from the Canadian cold, rubbing their bodies together like sticks in the hands of Boy Scouts, trying to recreate the Jamaican heat they had known well but had left behind. Paradise was now just a memory, tucked into that space behind the eyes, replaced by a, re by a reality of snow as they skated on thin ice, as they tried to find this new life they had been promised and heard so much about. Nights of heat-seeking planted a bun in the oven. By the third trimester, an engagement ring came as they counted down to month number nine. Each October morning was greeted with a case of nerves as they anticipated whether or not this would be the day. Two weeks came and passed. On a Monday, they congregated with potential grandparents to eat, talk, laugh, and give thanks to the Savior. Later that night, what might have been gas turned out to be labor. <laughs> Relatively painless, two hours later, the two who had given up their son were given a new one, their first born on a Tuesday. I was the immigrant's dream. My mom was a hot girl in the 70s, but having me made her lukewarm as she stretched from a size 7 to a 14 to accommodate my potential. So I always try to live up to it. <laughs> I always try to live up to it. Humbled by the sacrifices made by 21-year-old kids, I am the immigrant's dream. Cut from the same cloth, just another part of the quilt, so everything that I build is built on their backs. I take no steps forward without looking back. I keep my past and my present and my lineage in perspective so that regret will never be a part of our family's existence. No second guessing whether or not a better life ever existed. For as long as I continue bearing my soul through my creativity and my writing, there'd be no need for them to yearn for the heat from the Jamaican sun because I am their dream. And when they look at me, I want them to see that their sun is still shining. Thank you very much. Wow. 
that was amazing. Thank you, Dwayne. I don't know how Simon will follow that, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Donc, notre prochain présentateur. So, our next speaker is Simon Bro, uh, director and CEO of uh, Canada Council. He's been here for 18 months, and he's spoken in many places about the role of the arts in society. And just last week, the Globe and Mail published an interview with Simon. Council towards a major transformation, beginning, of course, with our new funding model, which, was, uh, which will come into effect in 2017. And now he will share with us more on this exciting work and where we are headed in the months and years ahead. Simon. Merci, Michel, d'avoir été en sandwich. Thank you, Michel, for being in sandwich between me and Dwayne. Um, thank you. I, I think y your words are, I mean, it, it's, you're a great performer, but you embody uh, what we are fighting for. Actually, we really want to make sure that we will hear this work more and more, this kind of work, because this is uh, the idea of the Canada Council. And it brings a kind of a supplement down in an annual public meeting. So, cela uh, dit, je veux souhaiter bonjour à tout le monde. This being said, I want to welcome everyone. And Pierre, uh, to your kind words, I would like to add a warm thank you and a warm welcome to everyone. We're so happy to see that so many people are following all the steps of our transformation. People here, people online on the web. Obviously, what we're trying to do right now is to engage into a transformation that is very promising for Canada Council, for the artistic professional art uh, community, and for all our uh, citizens. We want to push back the limits of excellence. As we continue to transport, we'll continue our commitment to transparency, and this will come through in all our activities and communication. You talked about the significant anniversary, that is the 150th anniversary of Canada and the 60th of Council. And you said that we made a deliberate choice to celebrate this anniversary by turning towards the future. We are looking to the future with sensibility and responsibility of pioneers. I'm not saying that we've discovered a new world, not yet, but we have looked closely at the demographic, economic, and technological changes that are reshaping our society. The same changes are redefining the arts in terms of issues around creation as well as influence, recognition, and promotion. For example, we're following the way that young people are interacting with each other and the arts, the way they are expressing themselves and redefining the social connection. We believe that it is our responsibility to open up to a new generation of creators, a generation that doesn't necessarily relate to our system or want to confirm to models of the past. I can assure you that we're looking at these kinds of systemic sociological changes with a keen awareness of their potential impact. And we're doing so with the hindsight of a wealth of expertise and experience that has over the decades established the Council's credibility. We want to scale up our impact and strategically investing our current resources and planning for future investments. Our own transformation at Council reconnects us with our original mandate. At the same time, it contextualizes it and updates it. Over the past year, I've said often in many forums here at home and on the international scene that this was an unavoidable responsibility for a public arts funding organization. Our transformation is based on responsible engagement, our own, of course, and that of the arts community. Finalement, nous voulons nous retrouver dans un endroit où les arts sont vraiment importants. And as a vector of true personal and social development. Here, what we need to do to get there. First, we need to value and strengthen the main role of artistic creation. 
To do this, we want to show that the quality and originality of artistic and literary work are of critical importance for our economy and for the positioning and outreach of our communities and country. We want artists to have the time and the resources they need to pursue their goals and attain new heights that make Canadian creation unique. We want their work to be even more valued and valuable and to offer meaningful experiences to the audiences they want to reach. We want the focus to be on quality rather than quantity and production at any price. The transformation we're proposing is results-oriented. We want to be able to show the outcome of our investments and their impact on the intelligent, smart, sustainable development that we all seek. We want the community to take part in showing the benefits of our investment, and we want the Canadian population to benefit more fully from this artistic vitality we are encouraging and appreciate its advantage to the fullest. We see artistic life as a factor in the well-being of each individual and of our communities. The arts organizations and institutions we support play a leading role in their communities and in the development of their arts form. Our new funding model recognizes that public engagement is at the art of their work. Nous envisageons donc une présence et un rôle accru des arts à toutes les tables de décision où se joue notre avenir quotidiennement. I said it clearly. Every time we shared information on the new funding model, this new model is only one phase of our transformation. The ultimate goal is for the arts to become a crucial dimension in major decisions on public policy, governance, and human and sustainable development. The arts are increasingly seen as a driver of innovation in many sectors that up to now had not considered them. For example, research on the effects of dance is already informing the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. To bringing the arts into the heart of our development, we need new ways of acting, new ways of thinking. We can't simply repeat the same old ways. We need to open and be flexible. To imagine a brighter future for the arts, we need to listen actively. We need to be ready to look beyond our usual partnerships and exchanges. We need to leverage our investments in creation and the development of arts organizations. We want to coordinate our efforts with our regional and provincial colleagues. The Council's perspective is pan-Canadian, and our impact at Canada Council must be felt throughout this entire country. Our values, our responsibilities, our choices with respect to official languages, indigenous peoples, cultural diversity, inclusion and equity, including deaf and disability communities, are more important than ever if we are to assume the leadership role expected of us in the public funding of the arts in Canada. Over the past year, we clearly shown our commitment, more our capacity to be leaders in the art funding. For instance, we launched in partnership with the GW McConnell Family Foundation and the Circle the Reconciliation Program. This partnership invests in the power of art and imagination to inspire dialogue, understanding, and change. And the Council is determined to reaffirm and update its relationship with First Nation, Inuit, and Métis artists and the Creating, Knowing, and Sharing program in new funding model is based on an, a self-determined approach that recognizes the diverse artistic expressions and custom of these community. As Crown Corporation, the Council is built upon a historical and legal framework that give us great responsibilities and great advantages. Our unique attributes have at many times throughout our history, allowed us to be a beacon, a pioneer, a leader. The arm's length relationship we enjoy is very important. It has allowed us to engineer our own transformation so that we can move forward on a new approach to funding the arts. 
We want Canadians to recognize the relevance of funding the arts and to benefit from it. The arts inspire and have the power to bring people together. I'm thinking of the tour of the Rizwan Muazam Kwawali group whose concert give audiences the chance to discover the Sufi music of Islam and its message of harmony and understanding. Another recent example mentioned by Pierre earlier is the initiative we recently announced with Sun Life Financial, allowing arts organization to give a Syrian refugee free admission to some of their events and activities. This is a test. If it works very well, I can promise to you that we will have other projects of this nature. We also want to open up the world to Canadian creators. Last year, internationally, 1.1 million people saw more than 45,000 performances, exhibitions, and screenings presented on tour by organizations funded by the Council. We can do even better, and we intend to. And rightly so. Our new funding model gives us a privileged position to be a leader in public funding of the arts in the future. I mentioned transparency at the beginning of my presentation. An excellent example of this is our commitment to provide open data on our activities in the coming weeks. This will be a practical tool for the arts community and for our partners and anyone interested in the arts to better understand the sector. Any new research we undertake will be carried out with the same concern of the practical sharing of knowledge. We are transparent. We will continue to be so. This means including you in our plans for the future. We invite you to take part in our strategic planning by participating in a survey. This consultation will give you the chance to tell us what we can do to achieve our strategic directions for the next five years. In the coming weeks, we will be inviting all those who follow us on social media who are on our distribution list to take part in that survey. You will also be able to find how to participate in the survey on our website on January 28th. The teams it covers will be familiar to you. They, after all, have been informing the vision behind the transformation for the past year. Teams like artists and audiences in the economy of the future, a digital strategy for the arts, Canadian arts and the world, and indigenous art, a new relationship for shared future. Naturally, the Council commitment to equity youth and young artists will be enshrined in our strategic orientations as well. The survey is not a consultation that merely leads to a report. The results will inform our ongoing work. We want to maximize our impact and demonstrate the results of our activities and all of our investments. The Council will continue to forge collaborations and build meaningful partnerships for the future. We've already established several tangible results. I'm thinking here, for example, of national and international partnerships that you will see where we will publish the annual report. And actually, it's coming, but there was a transition from a government to another, so it takes more, year, more time this year. For example, you will see that the Canada Council joined forces with the Canadian Music Centre and Vancouver's Music on Main to present Canadian artists in Rotterdam at the Classical Next Forum. We also sent a delegation of agents of Canadian artists and orchestra to this event, which drew more than a thousand professionals for, from 45 countries. This was an incredible moment to show the world the fresh perspective that Canadian artists are bringing to classical music. Cultural demo democracy, yeah, but cultural diplomacy and exports are key elements in our support of Canada's international outreach. Last year, we doubled our international investments from five to $10 million. Canadian Commission for UNESCO, which is housed in the Council, also organizes many initiatives and leverages its strong networks, chair sectorial commissions and partnerships, all to invite active participatory engagement at the local, national, and international levels. 
during the International Day for Elimination of Racial Discrimination, municipalities and the Canadian Coalition of Municipalities Against Racism and Discrimination, created by the UCC UNESCO, mobilized their communities. For example, the community of King County, Nova Scotia, came together to create a work of public art symbolizing the fight against racism. In our new funding model, there will be one program for national outreach, one for international outreach. Of course, we will continue to be present at many forums, as I was last year throughout Canada and internationally. This spring, I will be I will taking part in an international summit on the arts in Hong Kong, Hong Kong invited by the country. Tammy Scott, uh, our uh, director of uh, uh, communication and many other things, will also go to Taiwan to discuss the, discuss the Canada Council's Art Bank and its new business model. We will continue to contribute to cultural diplomacy, as I said. It's very important for us. This powerful affirmation cannot become a reality of its own. Investing in our future is a group effort and I, a call to citizens, to all artists, and to all governments. A call to all those who want to be pioneers of a bright future for the arts, because art is all of us. It's our endless ability to create, dream, and to bring the future to life. This is our plan. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Simon. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. We're going to turn it over to you for uh, your turn to talk to us. And uh, donc, c'est maintenant à vous la parole. We now it's your turn. Person, we would invite you to come to the mic and just line up here, and we will try and take questions for the about the next 20 minutes. And if we don't get to them all, we will be able to uh, answer them at the reception or online. Donc. Si vous avez des questions, je vous invite à venir au micro. So please go to a microphone if you have a question here. And I will read to you the questions we got through Twitter and online. Do you see more? So, and we received it by email. What will the Canada Council do with the potential budget increase as promised by the Trudeau government? How and where will you invest these funds, and what will be your strategy for allowing the arts community to benefit from this investment? If only I knew the answer. No, seriously. Um, as you know, the, the new prime minister handled a mandate letter to our minister, Melanie Jolie, and in that mandate letter, uh, she is commissioned, tasked to double the budget of the Canada Council. So obviously we are now trying to figure out what it will mean. It's a really big investment. It's never happened in the history of the Canada Council and it's not happening right now anywhere in the world. Clearly what we uh, are trying to do, what we will do is invest according to the new funding model. So clearly uh, we published, released the six programs and the different components of the program and the investment will, made to, to, will be made in order to attain the desired outcomes of each of those programs. I already indicated uh, since uh, many months that for the Canada Council, Aboriginal is a huge priority international outreach is another one, and digital is very much on our mind. Obviously, uh, we will be able to achieve more than that, but this is the general approach we're taking right now. And until the moment it is in the budget, that money doesn't exist. So we will all watch with all Canadians with a lot of uh, anticipation and excitement the first uh, budget of the Trudeau government. So if there are there any questions from members present? Otherwise, I can ask my colleagues for questions that we received on um, social media. Merci, Geneviève. That's very analog. Oui, c'est ça, c'est <laughs> parfait. Donc, uh, question de... Question from Sonia in Montreal. In the new programs, we don't see the name commissioner anymore or curator. Is this still uh, used? 
Yes, yes, it is still, they are still eligible. Or what I would suggest here would be for Sonia to contact the council. The work of curators is very important and valued. We can't uh, improve our, our understanding of the arts and all without the intervention of curators. Similar to the first one, actually, has the council received money as a result of the liberal government investing in the arts? <laughs> Will the investment that the government has made contribute to more programs across a greater community in the arts? So, obviously we did not receive any money so far, and nobody did, because we are waiting for the first budget. Uh, yesterday, the Minister of Canadian Heritage gave a very interesting interview. I put that on my Twitter account. She gave an interview in St. John, New Brunswick, and she was explaining how important the investments in the arts are in terms of generating economic development, innovation, and all of that. She precisely referred uh, to the Canada the Council and the importance of supporting the artists in a, in a more meaningful way. So clearly where there's an alignment, what we really want to do, as I said in my speech for us, it's really important to make sure that we're supporting the new generation of artists, that we're consolidating uh, the organizations that we are supporting now for them to be able to do more quality work, to go deeper and higher in terms of their work and make sure that the art sector will thrive. So the, clearly, uh, again, we, are, we, we, need to, we need to find out exactly what is in the budget, but the intention of the Canada Council is to scale up its impact and make investment that will really make a, a difference because the kind of uh, investment that the government is now talking about uh, need to make a difference for at least a generation. It's very important public investment and repeating what we did in the past is not the solution, but we, try, we will try to make investment that will really uh, influence and shape the cultural and artistic landscape in this country for the years to come. Big we, of course, please. Um, hi, I, um, my question actually is sort of related to what you just said. Um, you said in your speech that um, you want public engagement to be at the heart of, of the work, and I'm wondering if that is something that um, organizations and even individual artist, artists should keep in their mind as they're creating work in the years to come. I, I think it's really important. I mean, and, and in the new funding model, we try to be very nuanced on every approach. One very important feature in the new funding model is we take into consideration the notion of scale. So, for instance, if you look in the new funding model and you realize that we're talking about, let's say, organizations that have a $2 million budget plus, you will see that the expectations that we have in terms of diversity, in terms of public engagement, in terms of outreach, are very articulated and are very precise because we feel that it's the choice of those organizations to offer a kind of an ongoing programming at a scale that is is uh, large enough in order to do that. We understand that those same requirements are different for an organization of smaller scale, scale or for an individual artist. And I think it's a, something that needs to be very well understood. When we're talking about programs that are outcomes driven, we're not saying that each artist will need to deliver the specific outcome. What we're trying to do is the addition of all the artistic work subsidized and that program will create an outcome for Canadians. So yes, there are artists where uh, de deciding that at the very heart of their artistic practice, uh, engagement is really important. I know a lot of them. And there are other artists who are searching elsewhere, doing something else, where they are not yet ready and, and may never consider public engagement as part of as their individual practice, and that's okay. So I guess you, we, you kind of need to go and see what are the assessment criteria in each component of the six new programs. No, no, please. Any? You're so shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy, exactly. 
Uh, shall I go first, or do you want to no, go to you, the next? No, oh. you're. Okay, I'm Sandy Crawley from the National Reading Campaign, Campagne pour la lecture, and uh, our our work, although it's focused on on uh, particularly on promoting reading, uh, we think of reading, or we we are beginning to think of reading as much more than just reading a book. So uh, I'm thinking of the the example that you gave of the uh, work you did with the McConnell Foundation uh, for uh, Indigenous artists. Um, you didn't specify genre there. You, the, your your outcome, it was like the mixing yeah. of genre is to be encouraged. I guess that's what I wanted to hear about, really. Actually, we, we decided with the, the idea of the new funding model is that we, will, we have programs that are not uh, tailored to serve uh, the needs of a specific artistic discipline. They are not multidisciplinary. They are non-disciplinary. They are neutral from a disciplinary point of view. So if a program is there to support artistic and literary creation, it's no, it's any artistic creation from any discipline. And, and our all the criteria, the assessment criteria, are there in order to make sure that it's supported. In terms of partnerships, like we did with the McConnell Foundation, we see partnerships as, as really, really important for the Kennedy Council to accomplish, its, to deliver its mandate, and its mandate is not only to support artistic creation and presentation and all that, but it's also to advance the enjoyment and the appreciation of arts and literature in Canadian society. So our intention is to be a very active and very engaged partner in order to deliver that, not only, not on a, only on our own, but with partners. So we're open for business. The next question I just said, can you tell us uh, what peer assessment looks like in the new funding model? I wish I could, no, we're, we're still working on that. But what is really important is we, the Canada Council, and we said that since the very beginning, we're absolutely committed to maintain peer assessment. We believe it's needed. It's, a, it's not the perfect, there's no perfect uh, system in the world, but it's, a, it's really a, a good system. And we are also uh, committed to maintain peer assessment by discipline, because we also need that to advance the arts form. But what we want to do now is we also want to make sure that we have a peer assessment system that is 2016. So what we are doing now is we, we are really going at the heart of what is peer assessment, what are the values of that, how can we make sure that we have a more robust system, a more transparent system, for instance. We want also make sure that in terms of, uh, of uh, the making of our uh, juries that we have uh, a system that, 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 that is renewed, that is, that is strong, so we're, and we also want to make sure that the, the, the assessors have everything they need in order to assess the quality of the work that they have to assess. So we really want to make sure that uh, uh, peer assessment is really first and foremost about the quality, it's first and foremost qualitative. So it's about the quality of the work, it's about the feasibility of the project, it's about the, 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 the trajectory of the specific organization of a specific artist, and the Canada Council wants to take uh, responsibility for the financial decisions that are, uh, in fact, the conclusion of those assessments. So, uh, you will hear a lot about that. It's a very important uh, file right now, and uh, there will be a lot of discussions. So it's not about completely reinventing the wheel, but it's about making sure that the peer assessment system uh, survives and uh, stays at the forefront of what the Kennedy Council does, and that we correct some uh, weaknesses that we saw over the years in the peer assessment system. So it's the next kind of a big file on which uh, uh, we are working right now at the Canada Council. It's very exciting, and we'll come back on that with more details. Uh, hi, Simon. My name is Andrew Davies. I run an organization called Number Nine, Contemporary yeah, Art and Environment. Um, in regards to uh, culture playing a role in addressing uh, the global and multi-generational issue of climate change, uh, there was some mention about physical adaptation of buildings and so forth. What role do you feel that culture has in bringing awareness to environmental issues 
and what role do you think artists have in uh, being pioneers and showing the way towards a more sustainable future? I think that uh, artists uh, definitely uh, here and all over the world have already played a huge role in order to uh, to be the um, les pinceaux dans la mine. I mean, to to really uh, alert people about that. A lot of artistic work has been done really to express what are the issues, what is the, what are the urgencies, and possibly pointing to some solutions. We we think that the role of the Canada Council is to see that yes, it's happening, to support it the way it should be supported and encourage that and clearly the question of uh, clearly the question of uh, sustainable development and the question of environment and all of that is rising you know for all the good reasons now at the top of the agenda in this country and elsewhere so clearly uh, we are very open and very eager to be more active on that front since the artists want to be active Canada Council is not creating the art Canada Council is trying to, d to discover, to see, to accompany, to, to, to support, to be there when it's needed in order for the arts to advance. But I think there's a, I, I hope uh, that there will be more and more work on that front. And we'll see, uh, you know, uh, again, what's in the budget. But it's clear that uh, if the Canada Council plays a big role in the 150th of Canada, uh, the question of environment will be certainly uh, on the agenda in terms of possible projects to support. Thank you for the question. Une question de Réal à Montréal. Réal in Montreal. Isn't it time to question ourselves on the most efficient way of making sure that there's a sustained demand for the cultural products that we produce? Absolutely. And people that know me know that it's an obsession that I have. Obviously, uh, the demand for art, for cultural products, for shows, for artists' work is something that must be supported. And the role of Canada Council, according to the legislation in the past 60, 60 years, is interesting because from the outset, it was a role to develop a new appreciation for the arts. So in the past decades, for all kinds of reasons, we focused mostly on supporting creation, uh, presentation, so sustaining uh, the supply, but not much for the demand. And now we realize that the future of artistic creation is closely linked to an interesting and renewed meeting between the artistic offer and the supply and demand. And that's where the digital comes into play. This is why Canada Council is now reflecting about the fact that the professional artistic community in Canada did not get very much investments for the digitalization. And so we need to see now how we can use the benefits from the digital world to make sure that there's a better uh, fusion and that we can develop the appetite, the passion, the, the hunger for arts in Canada. That's absolutely part of our mandate. And when we do our survey, you'll see that there are questions on the importance that the artistic community gives to that. And we are truly looking for solutions to progress on this plan, but on this level. But it's also important to uh, focus on our mandate, which is to uh, insist on the appreciation of the arts. Of course, our first responsibility is to support the arts. We can't ignore the importance of developing an appetite and an interest for the arts. You talked about a great project to give access to arts to the Syrian refugee. You said it was a pilot project, so you will analyze the result and if they are positive, you may have other projects of this nature. I wanted to know if you already have an idea of the type of projects that you would like to get involved into. No, really, we haven't had very lengthy discussions on this yet, but when the initiatives for the Syrian initiative was announced, 
many comments came to us from the artistic community and elsewhere saying it's a great project, but it would be important to realize that in our own country, we have citizens who are refugees in the country. They arrived here before or they're excluded from the economic system. So this question of access is important, yes, but that shed some light on this issue too. And in the next coming years, if with the private sector we could find other ways, like they do in England and elsewhere, other ways to support access to the arts differently than asking artistic organizations or artists themselves to fund this. I think it would be a great progress. There again, there are many progress. There's, there are many possibilities. We think that will allow us to, to review this in a simple way and how Canada Council maybe could develop a new arm for uh, access of citizens that are excluded. Lise Leblanc from the Visual, Visual Arts Group. Since this is a public meeting, I would like to congratulate you actually because last year we were here and you would talk to us about a new funding model and today, we see that you have announced it now. We are talking about it. Everything is transparent, so kudos. My question, I'd like to have an idea of your timeline for the strategic planning because we would like to take part in it. Yes, thank you. In the coming weeks, uh, before the end of the month, I think it will be January 28th next week, we will uh, launch our survey, which was developed around questions that I've mentioned, but any organization or artist is allowed to uh, table uh, uh, a report because we, a memorandum, because we want to know the priorities, their priorities, because our objective is to publish our strategic plan. It won't be a 500 pages long, but it will be a very useful and accessible uh, tool that will be available in April. So between now and April, there will be a federal budget. So it's very important for people to participate and truly answer the survey so that we have an idea where we should put the emphasis. And for Canada Council, we will certainly uh, take this into account to inform our decisions. At the same time, I think the selection of themes, some people have asked me, why did you pick those themes? Well, these themes are the ones that, uh, that uh, are in line with the uh, commitments made by the government. So we're trying to find an alignment here to help council make good decisions. It's coming up next week. So I'll start with the first, the Pierre. Quelle importance le what is the... What importance will Council give to uh, performing arts and with young public? Well, I talked about it, the, but the issue of youth, not only young creators, but youth in general, uh, succession is, is really important. Everything that has to do with young audiences uh, uh, it must be part of our priorities. Obviously, in Canada, in the various regions of the country, there are a lot of activities there. When you look at the new funding model and you look at the type of organizations that we support, it is clear that there are many opportunities there. When you talk about youth in Canada, we talk about, about diversity also and the aboriginals because the youth is very diversified. So if I say that uh, diversity is a priority, if you are dealing with a young public, you'll see that they are closely linked if you want to get the support of council in the future. Last question, Pierre-Antoine. You're talking about presenting and outreach, but what about greeting international artists? Oh, that's an excellent question. So if we want Canada, to be known elsewhere in the world, we have to be to practice reciprocity. So we have to invite some artists here. We do it in some festivals, but we don't invite as much as we are invited abroad. So obviously, Canada Council in those two international programs and in Canada, that in these two 
programs. We have invested more in the past uh, year at the international level. If you look at their components, you see that it is there. And we are very clear on the fact that if we want to play a more important role at the international level, we must invest more in reciprocity, so in having foreign artists come here. It is a question, once again, when you will answer the survey, this will come through if you think that it is important for us to hear it, if you want us to invest in that. It's an excellent question. We can't be really present at the international level if we don't invite people here, too. Well, thank you. Well, thank you to all presenters and artists who joined us today. Uh, thank you, Duane. Thank you, Art Cirque. And thank you all for being here today. Art Cirque and all of you for being here. Uh, just a little reminder that you will find all the speeches site as well as responses to questions which we weren't able to answer uh, that we received online. And this concludes the live stream portion of our event. So those of you who watched online, thank you very much. Donc, merci à tous et ceux et celles qui nous ont écoutés en ligne. Je vous souhaite une bonne... So good evening, all. Et... Hope that you join us for an informal reception. We'd be pleased to speak with all of you. And just a little note, people wearing name tags are people who are either staff or board members. Blue are for program staff and others, and white are board members. And we really hope that you come and speak with all of us. Donc, les gens ici, uh, j'espère que vous allez vous joindre à nous pour la réception. Everyone join us for the reception, those who have uh, uh, name tags. Uh, yeah, you'll see our names on our sign. Blue is for staff, white is for board members, so we hope you'll come and talk to us on our major issues. Thank you so much.